This video describes the use of Merlin in volume cycling mode. Using Merlin in volume cycling mode is probably the most intuitive and simplest way of using Merlin. In essence, you determine the tidal volume to be delivered and the time in which it's delivered, set those parameters and set the ventilator to run. Calculation of the tidal volume is really straightforward. I'll go through this fairly quickly. It is covered in lots of notes that are available on the website. But basically, we're going to assume 10 mils per kilo body weight as our tidal volume. So first of all, we'll turn Merlin on. Merlin comes on, does its self-check, and then is ready to use. The configuration for this rebreathing circuit has been covered elsewhere in previous videos, so I'm not going to go into that today, but I have got it configured as a rebreathing circuit using the soda lime and a rebreathing bag. And as mentioned in those previous videos, this rebreathing bag is on the inspiratory side of the circuit where it must be to support the use and the function of Merlin. Right, so for volume cycling mode, <coughs> here's our patient. You recognize Leo from previous videos. Leo has an internal bag, and for the purposes of this demonstration, he has a tidal volume of 200 mils, which in practice would mean we were effectively ventilating a 20 kilogram animal. So a 20 kilogram animal comes into your practice, you apply the formula 10 mils per kilo, 10 times 20 is 200 mils, so we have set a 200 mil tidal volume. <coughs> On Merlin, to set tidal volume and work in volume mode, we must have an inspiratory time set. So the inspiratory time, for most purposes, will be adequate when set to one second. We set inspiratory time to one second. Our tidal volume is in mils, and we said would be 200. So we set that to, to 200. And the expiratory time, we want an IE ratio initially of greater than one to two. So I would set it between two and three. In a moment, it's set to 2.8, which is fine. Our maximum airway pressure is, as described before, is a safety circuit limit. And we'll leave this at roughly 10, 5 to 10 centimetres above our anticipated maximum, which will probably be about 15. So we'll set this at 25. And the assist mode threshold is not important in this setting, as the assist mode will be off. Having set this configuration up, and having the fresh gas flow set accordingly, at the moment I've got this running at about 1.5 litres, which is in excess of the requirement of a rebreathing circuit, but in the initial stages it, in it, it allows the circuit to quickly um, raise the isofluorine or an anaesthetic agent concentration, so I'll leave it at slightly higher for the moment. And now we just put the ventilator to run. Now the ventilator is delivering 200 mils in one second, and you'll see Leo's chest rising during the inspiratory phase. You'll also see here the airway pressure in the inspiratory circuit and the expiratory circuit rising and falling with the inspiratory um, phase. The scale here is a guidance only and it's a, it, it can be seen that it's going to just over 15, 16 notches on this uh, graph and the same on here. So we would guess at about 15 to 16 centimeters. For ac accuracy, the actual pre pressure is constantly logged and shown on the screen on the line AP equals. And here we can see that actually our maximum airway pressure is getting to 18 centimeters. So we've set our tidal volume, we've set our inspiratory time, we've set our expiratory time, which dictates our respiratory rate. And now the animal is ventilating at a rate of 15 breaths a minute with a maximum inspiratory pressure of 18 centimeters. Now in practice, if this was 18 centimetres and this was a normal healthy dog, I would consider that to be slightly excessive and to initially reduce that, I would simply reduce the tidal volume. Having reduced the tidal volume to 150 mils, we now find that the maximum airway pressure reached is 12 centimetres of water. And this is ideal for most dogs and cats of normal physiological behavior. 
If there are other conditions that affect lung compliance, then you may vary this. But for most, most animals, I would stick to 10 to 12 as a target pressure. So this is volume cycling mode. A preset volume is delivered. At the end of the volume, when the volume's all been delivered, it's, um, the animal is allowed to breathe out and the process repeats. In volume cycling mode, the ventilator wants to deliver the whole volume. It really has no concept of the compliance of the animal or of the back pressure or of it, um, reaching a certain pressure. The only caveat to that is that our maximum working pressure is set at 25. And if for some reason the volume couldn't be delivered without rising above 25, an alarm will sound. So if I am to occlude this now and restrict, restrict the movement of the chest, the, the 150 mils is delivered into a smaller volume and so the alarm will sound because the pressure will rise. In that instance, the piston will stop going forward, come back and try again. You'll see that the alarm maximum pressure exceeded has appeared on the screen and will not be removed even though the ventilator is ventilating normally until that maximum pressure exceeded warning has been recognized and reset by pressing the alarm reset. And now we're back to where we were an airway pressure maximum of 11 or 12 and a respiratory rate of 15. So volume cycling mode is very simple. You adjust your volume to achieve an average airway pressure, end airway pressure of 10 to 12 centimeters. And you adjust your expiratory time mainly to control the respiratory rate. In the next part of the video, I'm gonna change the settings and we're gonna look at pressure cycling mode. In the previous video, we looked at volume cycling and saw how simple it was to apply simple math to calculate a total volume for an animal and apply it to a patient and then adjust it for a target airway pressure. In a similar way, we can ventilate an animal with a target pressure rather than a target volume. And when we use a target pressure, this is called pressure cycling. In pressure cycling, we will deliver a constant flow until a certain predetermined pressure is reached. This is subtly different from volume cycling, where a volume is delivered until the vol whole volume has been delivered, um, irrespective of the pressure reached, unless we set a safety valve limit. With pressure cycling, the, the flow is delivered until a certain pressure is reached, which will achieve the same um, function, but if we occlude the chest or in interfere with delivery in any way, we are certain that the pressure will never be exceeded, and we'll demonstrate this now. So in the previous uh, demonstration of volume cycling, we gave 150 mils to Leo, and he got a maximum inspiratory pressure or peak inspiratory pressure um, at the end of inspiration of 12 centimeters of, of water pressure. To set up for pressure cycling mode, we're going to turn the inspiratory knob completely around to far anti uh, clockwise as it will go until it says PL, indicating pressure cycling mode. You notice when we do that, that the volume knob goes from a volume to a flow, because in pressure cycling mode we're going to deliver a fixed flow until we reach a, um, a set pressure. The very rough calculation is that at 6 litres a minute is 100 mils per second. You'll recall that Leo had a tidal volume of between 150 and 200 mils, so we want to deliver that in about a second, which means we want to set our flow rate somewhere between 8 and 12 litres a minute. So we'll set this to, to 10, 10 litres a minute and our expiratory time will remain the same as it was before because we have roughly an inspiratory time of one second and expiratory 2.8 but this time our maximum airway pressure has become our target and so we set this to 12. So this is our target airway pressure and if we've made our calculations correct then we should find that the volume delivered will be about 150 mils as we had with the previous volume cycling. This again sys mode is off this is in the uh, flow position, and now we hit, hit run. We'll see that Leo's chest is inflating just as before. The airway pressure is getting up to about just under 15 here, as we see by the sort of rough guide from the bar graph gauges. And if we look on the screen, we'll confirm that the airway pressure reached is 12, which is what we've set here. 
In addition, Merlin knows very accurately how much um, volume has been delivered and can me uh, measure it and display it on the screen. And here we see that the tidal volume is 152 mils. So we've achieved exactly the same ventilation uh, performance, pressure cycling, as we did when we were volume cycling. And so you may say, well, why, why would I do that? They're, the, they're exactly the same. It's a lot easier to volume cycle. I can calculate volumes easily. Why would I pressure cycle? The interesting thing, or the most useful feature of pressure cycling is, as the animal gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the protection ability afforded by pressure cycling becomes more apparent. If I now occlude the chest, the pressure still did not rise above 12, because we're targeted for 12, and I just delivered a much lower volume. And in that instance, 90 mils was delivered. There's no interference to the function of the ventilator. It's behaving as it norm normally would. So if a surgeon is operating inside the chest, or this is a very small bird that you're maybe just putting some slight pressure on, or you changed it from sternal to dorsal recumbency, there's going to be no change in the delivered pressure to the animal. And that becomes more and more important as the animal is smaller and smaller. I would use pressure cycling mode for procedures where you're likely to open a chest and the compliance changes greatly from a closed chest with a relatively um, inelastic total structure to an open chest where you have very elastic lungs. That dramatic change in compliance is something that would be more easily um, adapted by pressure cycling than volume cycling. However, it behaves in a, in a very similar manner uh, to volume cycling and is very easy to set up. And this concludes the uh, brief introduction to volume and pressure cycling on Merlin.